Welcome. We are very, very, very excited about having these iPads for our kids. Um, we are really kind of pioneers here because most of the schools will do a class set and share them throughout many grade levels. When I started the iPad program one-to-one -one at Cardinal Newman, I learned very quickly that an iPad is a personal device. It's not meant to be shared with a group of five kids or 15 kids. The way that it's most effective is if your child uses the same iPad every time, okay? Um, my 18-month-old son grabs my phone, hits the button, and can call people, uh, can get Siri online. So this is their reality. This is the world they're living in. And part of our mission statement says that we're going to prepare our children for the global society in which we live. Now, that being said, don't mistake me for a screen time administrator or a mom. I am very aware of the concerns of our children and the amount of screen time that they should be exposed to. The iPads introduced into our classrooms are a resource, a tool. They do not replace the teacher. They do not replace the textbook. They do not replace the way pages feel in your children's hands. <clears throat> Now, eventually, I do hope to utilize them to start getting rid of some of those textbooks so that they don't have to carry so much around. <laughs> and I like it to be a slow process because I think there's real value in our students knowing what a book is. Mm -hmm. um, we value very much this media center and every page in it. That's not something that this school will ever fully give up. It's not part of our vision. So don't expect complete 100% digital. So, I'm going to get down to the nuts and bolts. I have an agenda to go through, and then if you have questions, just pop your hand up and we will answer them. To deploy the iPads, we're going to start in the classrooms. I'm not sure if we're going to start at the top or the bottom. Is this again still up there? She abandoned me. Um, so, we might start with fifth grade, probably, and work our way down. The fifth graders are very anxious to get a hold of these things. And um, what happens is second through fifth grade, we'll get the regular sized iPads, okay? Reason being, I want to be prepared for what's coming. So I'm always trying to look forward. I really loved the minis for the kids, but you cannot use the minis for, standardized, or for any standardized testing. Our testing starts in second grade. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do testing on the iPads this year but eventually would like to be able to do that. I watched very closely a lot of schools who rushed into iPads and um, they did minis all the way up through eighth grade. And now for the next three to five years, they can't use them for a lot of things. Even some textbooks are not compatible with the minis. So while I like them a lot for their little hands, second through fifth grade will have the regular sized iPad. We have, um, we will have carts in every grade level, not classroom, because we have smaller classes. So a cart might hold 40 iPads. Well, we only need one for second grade then. Um, so we're not going to buy stuff we don't need. Uh, the carts will be locked, and they will also serve as a charging area. Uh, the teachers, again, will ease into using these. So if your kids come home and they're like, we're dying to use the iPads, and Ms. Geithner only brought them out once today. That's normal. That's the way I'd like it to go. Um, as much as uh, they want to have their hands on them all day, uh, poor Mrs. Geithner does not want to look at glow faces all day long. It's a resource, and we have to respect the slow introduction so that we can do it right. Um, each student will be assigned an iPad through their teacher. The teacher will be in charge of the monitoring of the iPad in the classroom, and they will only use their assigned iPad. Now, is that foolproof? No, we're dealing with kids. Just yesterday, we had an eighth grader who are our most responsible group with these iPads accidentally pick up somebody else's iPad and take it home. That happens. Luckily, we're in a great area, a great community, where the kids are like, oh, I've had this for 12 hours and it's not mine. <laughs> Oops. And we got the iPad back this morning. Everybody's happy. Nobody broke anything. That is the exception to the rule. It does not happen very often. 
but they all look alike. So the kids' names are on them. They each have their own individual tag number. So that's how they'll tell who's is whose. And they have to be vigilant about, hey, this one's not mine, or this one is mine. The good thing about your children is that the iPads will never leave their classroom. The best part about this for you is that you don't have to monitor these things at home. Because let me tell you, that's where things get really challenging because you don't have a network like we do or a device management system called Meraki like we do that says, oh no, my friend, you're not going to Facebook. <laughs> you can't go there, it's locked. Um, anytime you're on our wireless network, you can see there's very many sites you can't go to. Lots of times there'll be even Catholic websites we can't get to just because of some of the words that are on the site, it's blocked. Uh, Mrs. McGinn does an amazing job of keeping up that filter for us, and it's a big job. Okay, so educational apps that are approved and purchased through the school will be used and downloaded to the iPad by our tech department for the children to use. Um, it won't be like you come in and say, well, I just really want her to have this app. That's not the way they're working. It is not a social device or a personal. It's a school resource. Um, the teachers, each individual teacher, will provide parents with a list of apps that we're using quarterly. Some might provide it more often, but I expect them to provide it quarterly. Okay? So, for instance, October 16th is the last day of the first quarter. The first day of the next quarter, sometime that first week, you should expect to get a list of things that they plan to use during second quarter. Okay? <clears throat> Um, expectations from students and parents regarding the use of the iPads. I've already kind of touched on this. We have a secure Wi-Fi on campus, and I'm actually going to have Mrs. McGinn go into a little bit of detail. Do you want to? You don't want to do that? Well, I mean, I don't know what you want. Did I cover it? You did. You really covered it. We can't keep children from searching for things that are inappropriate. There we go. However, if they search for something inappropriate, they are not going to get there. They won't be able to click on the website that's bad. Even though they can Google, which we learned last year, they can Google <laughs> anything. Uh, they can't get so, to anything. Do you have a VPN there? What do you mean? Like, yes. Yeah. They, they can see the images, is what you're saying. They can't get to the websites, but they can type in whatever their curious brains come mm -hmm. up with. Just type in. They, nothing's going to show. They like can't them. see. And, they can't get to the website. Well, we cannot block Google Images. That is something we can't do. Images. Okay. okay. So images. they can still see images. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is where you come in. You have to have these conversations with your children. <clears throat> Don't search for those kinds of things. If you have questions, come ask me. Go ask your teacher. Go ask Father Mike. Um, they have to be... We have to talk to our kids on a regular basis about these things because obviously we have restrictions, but there's only so much we can restrict. And I used to tell the parents at Cardinal Newman, these kids are way smarter than we are, okay? As soon as I find a way to block something, they'll find a way to show me I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that's awesome. They keep me on my feet. <laughs> um, but we have to talk to our kids regularly about our expectations. I will be in every classroom saying, this is what I expect of you, this is what I do not expect of you, but I need you guys to do it at home. And I'm sure your talks will mean much more to them if it'll be a one-on-one -on -one basis. I'm talking to 20 kids at a time. Okay. Um, okay, so iPad insurance is probably something you have questions about. The paperwork is available here, and we would like it turned back in by October 8th. The insurance plan for third, no, for fifth grade and down, so pre-K three through five, the insurance plan is specific for students who keep their iPads on campus. We have a different program for five, uh, six through eight because they take theirs home. So it's a little bit of a different coverage. Um, last year, I believe we had less than five incidents where the iPads had to be uh, fixed or replaced. That's amazing. My first year doing this at Cardinal Newman, I don't know how many we had to replace or go through the insurance process. And it's honestly, I fully believe it's because of the cases. These are the cases that are recommended and approved by our insurance company, okay, and by Apple. 
and we went ahead and leased them with the device, okay? Um, the first year that I did this at Newman, they got, you know, cases that just didn't, just didn't cut the mustard. They just weren't, they weren't good enough. Um, and the kids, they hold them like this, and they swing them around, and they need something that it's going to stay in. So like those magnetic locked cases, it was the worst. As soon as the kid picks it up like this, the iPad drops, and there you go, you got a cracked screen. Um, the way that the program for the insurance works is that once damage is done, we do ask the parents to pay the $50 deductible, okay? And that's worked beautifully in middle school. But again, they do take theirs home, so there's more risk, there's more wear and tear. Uh, and with that, there still was only under five cases last year. And one very unique case this year where I saw a Ben Todd had I've never seen that before. Um, but we also have amazing turnaround time. Darren does a great job of getting the iPads out. We have to package them just so. We get special boxes, paperwork to fill out. We'll take care of all of that, okay? And one thing you also don't have to worry about is like, you know, when the kids shouldn't, but sometimes do, leave their iPads in the car and there they go, get stolen. In middle school, the parents are responsible for filing a police report and letting us know within 24 hours. Um, so that's, again, another thing you don't have to worry about, which is great. Um, we will, again, assign iPads to specific students. Uh, they will be in their cases. The teachers are going to be sure of that. Again, something you don't have to worry about. Nobody else should be holding your child's iPad. Tell them to be responsible for their own device. This is something that, again, we will reinforce at school, but we need you to reinforce at home. Because $50 is still a lot of money. And you don't want Susie Joe holding your child's iPad and throwing it across the room. And then you're like, well, <laughs> my kid wasn't even holding it. We're going to monitor closely. We're going to impress upon them the importance of the responsibility. Surprisingly, I think it'll be easiest with the lower grades um, because it, it might be easier to actually monitor them. Uh, it's the third, fourth, fifth grade really need to help us talk about personal responsibility with them. Okay? Um, that is everything. $50 deductible. All right, so I'm going to open the floor for questions. Oh, I wanted to actually show you the minis as well. So if you have anybody in pre-K 3 through 1, they have the same setup, the same tags on the back. And every student, again, will have their name on the back when we assign them. And they can expect to have these in the next week or days. Okay. And we always hit a speed bump. We always hit a snag. So just expect that too. Okay. Yes. Are they just going to do apps, or are they going to actually have certain websites that they go to? That's going to be on a teacher-by-teacher -teacher basis. So when you get the list of apps, they'll also tell you which websites on that list. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... And, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And the other question is, is this same iPad going to stay with them when they go to the next grade to the next grade? No. no. Nope. No. Each year they'll get something different until middle school. I was going to say, in, in third, fourth, and fifth grade, we're going to ease them into a program called Shobi. Um, if you know any middle school um, parents, the Shobi is something, it's, it's, a, it's a great school, essentially, drop box that the teachers use to go paperless with assignments. So the students are given an assignment in the program Notability. They do the work. They submit it in Shobi. The teacher grades it in Shobi and the student can retrieve it from Shobi with notes from the parents. So we're going to ease them into that. We're going to ease the third, fourth, and fifth graders also into like Pages, Keynote, the equivalent, the Apple equivalent of the Microsoft Office programs. And just a side note, we have no intention of getting rid of our lab or our PCs. We fully intend to be a dual platform school. So we want our children to be comfortable on a computer, desktop computer, as well as on the iPads because um, you know I don't, I don't see those going away anytime soon. So for all of you parents who joined us today virtually, we thank you for um, making time for us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email Mrs. McGinn or myself. And thank you very much.